Attack! 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 I understand that Sarah Valhalla Rose said the same goddamn thing on January 6, 2021. That stupid inbred twat deserves nothing but unhappiness. You goddamn moron. Just like anybody else that thinks that that was a good day for the country. All it did was expose the fact that there are a bunch of goddamn morons just like Sarah Valhalla Rose. So with that being said, I'm John Renton with my review, WWE Smackdown from Columbus, Ohio, the Ohio State University, home of the Buckeyes. Yeah, I'm just going to throw those little barbs in just for fun, because I can and I don't give a shit anymore. That being said, Smackdown was... it was alright, there was some decent in-ring action, they're really just trying to get to the draft. And then get to Backlash. In Puerto Rico, stay out of the showers, no Jose Gonzalez, put down that whatever it is, that sharp object, and... Call an ambulance! Oh boy, I'm going to make a whole bunch of goddamn jokes during that, because why not? Why not have fun? So, speaking of fun, I guess the first match was fun. It was Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar of the LWO against Finn and Priest. No Dominic, shockingly. I actually expect him to show up. Um, They need the draft to at least have some different feuds. I don't know if they're going to be fresh, <laughs> and the draft's just going to be rearranging the furniture... But at this goddamn point, just something, because I'm sick, I'm, I'm just sick of certain people interacting with each other week after week after week. The match was fine, and then they did the same thing that they did with the last tag match. I can't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago, but Priest was uh, the legal competitor, <clears throat> Santos didn't know, and got planted and pinned. The crowd was into most of the show, and that helped. But this was just a match that we've seen before. We've seen it before. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Hoo. We've seen it been done before. So, Priest then um, mocks Bad Bunny, who's going to be on Raw in Chicago next week. <clears throat> Zelina talks to Adam Pierce while wearing a uh, Daft Punk headband and Ninja Stars on her ears for some reason and wants to challenge Rhea. You know what? That kind of makes sense, given the interactions. I just think it's unfair because... Rhea is going to overlook Zelina. There's like everybody overlooks Zelina because Zelina can walk under the bottom rope without even ducking. So, but you know what? It might be fine. We get a package on Nakamura. We see Nakamura's package, the package of strong style. <laughs> hey, present seriously. If only they had done this more often during the time they've had him on the main roster. Then Cross and Scarlet are here talking about cards and... Whatever, and I gotta be honest, the way they shot this, I thought Cross was in front of a green screen. So yeah, that, uh, they're gonna have Cross against Nakamura. Crossamura, as it were. Sounds like a weird crossing guard in an anime movie. <laughs> then Team Y, you bald Ricochet, and the brawny paper strongman took on the Raiders with Valhalla. Hey look, Vegeta, more bald people. And Team Y, you bald won. In a match that nobody cared about. Well, I mean, some people may have cared, but... I don't like the Raiders, and I don't even really, I don't care for a lot of the tag teams because, again, interacting and doing, it's all because the Raiders attacked them, they assaulted them, they went after them backstage. And then Valhalla was like, attack, 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 yeah, we know how you feel, you stupid twat. Hopefully your kid grows up to be a lot smarter than you. Then again, the kid came out of the womb smarter than his goddamn mother. But then we get the entrances for the women for the tag team championship match. Liv and Raquel against Chelsea and Sonya for the women's tag titles. This is all because Chelsea got Liv wet on Monday. That's certainly uh, Monday Night Raw action. And this ended with Liv getting Chelsea wet behind the referee's back and then topping her 1-2-3. I have nothing against Liv. I'm glad she has a championship. I'm glad she's gained TV time. I don't know why getting her wet gets her angry. Is she a gremlin? Is she a mogwai? Possibly. Are there going to be little lives popping out of her? Does that mean we're going to get a whole bunch of lives and a train of lives? Stop thinking about it, Kier. I know you're thinking about it. You stop it. Get some help. We're on a clean show here. But yes, the champs retain. Kayla, just putting them out there. Good God. Riddle is an idiot. That's what I noted. Gunther took on Xavier in a very good Intercontinental Championship TV match. <laughs> Woods fought back. Gunther lays out his match as well, and Xavier can work. I'm sick of the New Day gimmick, but my god, Xavier really can work. He took this shit seriously. He takes a lot of his shit seriously because he is very good. He's had to fight back and fight through a whole lot of really, really bad shit, like the Consequences Creed stuff and other stuff in TNA before he made it to WWE. And 
it was well done. There was a hell of a goddamn leg drop he hit off the ropes for two. <laughs> he got another near fall and then got trapped in the sleeper. Gunther lost it for a second, then snapped it back, and Woods passed out, didn't tap out. Good stuff. This is worth checking out. This is probably the highlight of the goddamn show. Recaps of Sammy and Kevin and the Usos and all that stuff. And then the Usos make their entrance uh, with about 28 minutes left to go in the show. They cut a promo after a backlash rundown. <laughs> Why are we getting Seth Pheasant Rollins versus Edward James almost? Why is Edward James almost getting a pay-per-view match, especially for something... That, oh, I'm sorry, premium live event. Why, why, why? To what? They've had no interaction. Rollins is good. He is not a god. He cannot get something good out of Edward James almost. Nobody can. So, the Usos mock everybody that was, uh, you know, saying, oh, what are you going to do about your tag titles being lost, dude? And they mock Riddle, Sammy, Kevin. It's not just going to be any uh, rematch. It's going to be a rematch dedicated to the Tribal Chief, and we're going to win. And then we're going to have the match at Backlash, the six-man tag. Solo makes his entrance at 6.37 p.m., my time, and then Riddle jump starts. They do a no-DQ match, and I'm like, okay, jump start, you know what? They treat this seriously, and they put the weapons in here and there. It'll be fine. Oh, no, they get a bunch of kendo sticks and chairs, and I'm out. Not every no-DQ street fight, balls count anywhere goddamn match needs every single goddamn bit of weaponry. And even though... The table thing where Solo put it back underneath the ring to anger the crowd was funny. It's annoying. It's repetitive. And the Usos interfere um, after Solo gets pinned underneath the announcer's table <laughs> instead of Riddle. And then Riddle lays them out. And then Solo manages uh, to, well, first he misses a spike and then ends up hitting the Simone spike. One, two, three. And then they get a table out. Lay Riddle out with their D. Riddle takes the D from two men, and then there you are. That's pretty much it. And on that note, that's the end. SmackDown really didn't have much to offer outside of the Intercontinental Championship match. Not bad, but not necessarily something that you need to really care about. That being said, Riddle being laid out almost every single goddamn week, I'm all for that. You job that motherfucker out for the goddamn rest of his contract, I'm all for it. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.